Uh, hi, all. Okay, so thank you so much for staying here after 5.30. Uh, and I assure you that you will not regret, regret this time uh, because now I'm going to take you to the next level of testing, which is the future of uh, test automation and uh, some uh, cool stuff which I'm going to talk today. So uh, the, the thing which we are going to see over here is intelligent reporting. So when we see uh, in any of the SDLC cycle, most of the time goes into your testing and then the more time goes into your test analysis that whatever your reports are, what were the uh, results and how much time you spend uh, in analyzing the results. So uh, we are working on a ecosystem in which uh, we are building some machine learning, data science, and uh, artificial intelli intelligence kind of stuff in the test automation field or in the quality engineering field. And this is one step towards that thing. So when we talk about uh, evolution, so uh, Charles Darwin has said like, uh, one thing is like uh, survival of the fittest as well as if, uh, whosoever stays there is not who, who uh, adapt most is the one who can stay there uh, in the, in the, on the planet as well. So on the basis of the same concepts, uh, we are making evolutionary changes in quality engineering or quality assurance, whatever you want to say in that world. So if we talk about the past of testing, uh, it used to be like your QA is used to write some manual test scripts and all, and then they used to do days or months of testing, and then they used to do create some reports and all, they used to share those reports. And then with time, the things changed, and uh, we started doing some test automation, uh, which actually s saves a lot of time. But in test automation as well, what actually happens is it helps you to execute things faster. But when it comes to analyze things, your test execution reports and all, you still need to do some manual work. So even we are w living in a world of test automation, we are still doing some of the manual efforts. So the journey for test automation is like automated regression testing, which actually happens as of today. The future would be like the codeless automation and then QA-less automation. So when I say QA-less automation, testers do not need to worry. We are not um, <laughs> firing any of the QAs. We are just transforming them into the quality engineers and uh, taking them towards the, the more engineering mindset. So uh, this is the automation testing uh, phase in which people used to have like uh, automation, uh, automated regression testing. They used to create some uh, test scenarios which, which are there in the red, uh, the manual steps. And then there are some automated regression pack. There used to be some automated regression pack which used to be developed in your old Selenium test ng kind of uh, tools. Next comes the codeless automation in which uh, what we can have is like your automated regression pack uh, for uh, regression as well as your progression testing, then your non-functional testing, which we somehow see in the Lloyd specific world. And then where we create some BDD feature files and then once your feature file executes, you analyze the reports uh, as a manual effort. So this is the same thing which I was just talking about. So the next thing is uh, the QA-less automation in which what we are saying is that whatever your product requirement actually comes, you can create your test automation or your testing specific requirements or testing specific ecosystem on the basis of your product requirement itself. So there are some examples as of today as well, like your model-based testing is one of them and some other uh, future futuristic thing also. So this is the world, uh, this is the ecosystem which we are working on, which we are developing on. And the, the, the coming thing, which is intelligent reporting, is part of the same thing, which actually helps you to save time on analyzing the re reports and results which you get after your automated test executions. So uh, we have built this uh, automated uh, intelligent reporter, uh, which is based on some of the decision trees, uh, machine learning, and some other stuff. And then we have built some uh, uh, apps as well on it, which are built on some Java APIs. And then uh, you don't need to worry about uh, if, you, if you still don't know how machine learning works. All these uh, JAR files or Java utilities which we have built, you can just plug and play them into your uh, projects. And whatever reports are generated as of today, uh, of course, those should be your automated uh, uh, automation pack reports, which can either be in your Cucumber or Allure reporting system. Our, uh, our tool helps you to uh, analyze all those reports and give you a quick feedback that what kind of defects you were getting. So uh, if I talk about him, even Cucumber report, so Mohit uh, shown you an example of data uh, reconciliation testing in which once your testing has happened uh, through automation packs, you still get some failures and pass uh, scenarios. So our tool can help you to analyze those things uh, more quickly and without any manual intervention. 
so uh, these are the couple of the benefits which it gives like fast execution result analysis, one click de de defect creation, uh, custom uh, machine learning model we have, historic data and then we have some training things as well in the tool itself. So the tool learns automatically based on your historic data, based on your reports and all. So it's not like you are doing something only as of today and if tomorrow something else breaks, then your tool will fail or it will not give you the right results. So tool will learn automatically. There are training models which are there in the tool as well. So uh, I will show you the demo quickly. All right, so, so this is one of the app which we have built uh, in Python and uh, with uh, some of the decision tree and uh, other machine learning algorithms. So. Uh, so this was I was talking about. So people talk about GitHub, um, Jenkins pipeline, and, and all. But still, when we when we have those all things, all our reports actually gets generated in these kind of format in which we go and then our QAs or anybody else they go into the reports and they analyze that what was the actual reason behind this. But if with this kind of utility, what we can actually do is we can directly we can have a dashboard uh, for our tools. And if we go into the reporting system, so I need to start my app all right so now if i go into so this is the app which we have created if uh, anybody can uh, kind of uh, create their accounts on it uh, and if they go into it they will see their specific projects for example currently we are having uh, four projects over here uh, which are from lloyd's uh, examples so if somebody wants to go here and uh, so if you see, um, okay. So okay. So if you see here, uh, we can see different dashboards, dif different reports. So for example, this one, the first one, it shows you that what was the last twenty execution timeline. So it gives you all that complete background history or past history of your execution as well. Then it gives you the latest build information as well. So if you see this kind of, this, this one block, so it tells you the prediction as well, that whatever execution you ran, uh, what are the actual predictions for your failures? So if there is a console error, if there is an API downtime, if environment downtime or actual issues, it can actually categorize all those things. So currently you can see there is like 100% over here because we have not run the uh, model over here. So this is, uh, I will run it for you on the latest build. So this is the latest build and here it says there are two test cases which have failed. And this is the column which says like, uh, uh, predicted failure type. So currently it is blank. And if I go into this test case, so we are collecting this data from our normal uh, Cucumber execution reports. And if I go back, and if I run my model on this particular execution, so my, my model has been uh, run on this particular project. And if I go back, you will see here. So there were two defects. Now it is saying like 50, 50% 50 over here. So the first defect which is it has predicted now is that it is a functional application issue. And the second one which it has uh, identified over here is like it is a copy text issue. So these are the two different categories which it has told us. So even in the execution, we get multiple categories. Sometimes there are false failures and all. So it helps you to identify that how many defects are actually the application defects. Uh, OK. so. Uh, so, and then uh, once you actually identify the categorization as well, you can directly link this one, uh, all, you can uh, uh, link these uh, defects into your Jira, you can load all these defects into your Jira. So if I show you here, so for example, So this is the this is my Jira. Currently, there are like 13 defects over here. And if I want to uh, link all these defects with my stories and all, I can just do that directly from here. So if you see here, now uh, my 14th defect has been logged here. So you don't need to do any manual works. All your testing can can be automated with this thing. Yep. Yeah? Thank you so much for your time. Thanks.